This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. There's nothing better than the daylight when I go on delivery and like I, I take these boxes of mushies into these kitchens to the chefs and like the chefs and like the little sous chefs and the other little sidekicks, I don't know all their names, but like they scurry towards the box. It's like a little kids at Christmas, like they scurry to the box and like they all go, ooh. <laughs> it's like, that's my favourite thing. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Adam Bray from Westside Mushies never dreamed of being a farmer. He never even had an interest in mushrooms. But late one night, while scanning the internet, he stumbled on a video that changed his life. I started off at home um, in the spare room right next door to where we sleep, which was not ideal. But um, yeah, at the moment I've taken over my poor old dad's garage. So he lives in the house that I grew up uh, grew up in, in Woodville. Um, I'm 40 years old, so they've been there a while now. Um, and yeah, we basically took over his old domain of where he used to keep all his tools and do all his man stuff. Um, that's all been squished to the side of the shed. And we've put some like um, cool rooms in there and pretty much evicted him from his own garage. Um, so we're growing in there. Um, and pretty much there's a little bit that I still do at home, like a little bit of lab gear here and there. But, yeah, 99.9% uh, in the garage at mum and dad's house. <laughs> Ideas can come from just about any moment. But for Adam, the pandemic offered a clean slate, an opportunity for change. He just never knew Mushroom Farmer would be his calling in life. I reckon it was, like, during the very first lockdowns of... Um, like all the Rona stuff started last year, so whether it was March or April, um, at the time I was working in a job, uh, like a sort of in-between jobs. I'd, I'd just moved back from Indonesia and living in uh, Jakarta and Sydney, uh, and that that work that I was doing there wasn't an option in Adelaide, so I was, I was doing labouring, helping my girlfriend's brother out, or he helped me out by giving me a job in his business. Um, but I figured out pretty quickly that I wasn't going to be doing that for too long because my old man, elbows and knees and back, was just packing it in. It was manual labour. And I can tell you, 40 years old is not the first time to start picking up a shovel. Um, so when we were shut down, um, I think it was only like a couple of days after we'd all, all been shut down in that March or April or whatever it was, I was doing probably what most people were doing, sitting on my ass on, on the couch, all hours of the night watching Netflix and YouTube and all that sort of gear. And I just ended up on YouTube watching things that have absolutely nothing to do with mushrooms. But somehow, like you know how YouTube sends you on this like little mission where like you'll watch a movie and then, I mean a video, and then it'll recommend something else, it'll recommend something else, recommend something else, and then before you know it, you're watching shit that you got no idea how you got there. Well, that's, that's what happened to me. I landed on this video about mushrooms. Um, I'd never, ever really eaten any of those mushrooms. I'd never seen a lot of the mushrooms, had no interest in learning about them. Like I hate gardening. Um, but I just started watching these, these mushrooms, these, these guys from, I think they were from Ireland, like, um, and they'd set up some weird little, and this was so bizarre to me, like they'd set up, a, a farm, an urban farm in an office building in, I'm going to say Ireland or England. I can't remember. 
I was just I just found it so weird, um, but so interesting. Like just watching and looking at the the mushies, and I just got really obsessed about it. So like I just clicked on the next video, the next video, the next video, and then I saw they were like making a little bit of money. And I thought, um, but we're in lockdown. I don't know. I hate my job. Can't keep doing it. Um, maybe I could look at this as like a little hobby and maybe make a little bit of money. Um, so yeah, like that night, I, I ended up ordering three textbooks like online. Probably spent about two hundred bucks on textbooks, so like a real sciencey, super in depth one, and then like a mushies for dummies kind of book. And then I think the other one was it was like a magic a magic mushroom book, but it was like teaching you like a lot of the the techniques that they use are like how you can begin growing gourmet mushrooms. And it was, it was probably the most scientific out of all the, the books. It was written by Paul Stamets, who's like a real um, big guru in the mushy world. So, yeah, I ordered those three books, ordered a, a grow kit from a really cool mushy business in Brisbane called Little Acres, and the rest is history. They, they arrived like within a week, and, yeah, I, I don't know. I was just, just was totally sucked in. I just loved them. Like, I just got obsessed with them. At first, growing mushrooms was a hobby, but as Adam's obsession grew, he soon realized the opportunities, and so he set about creating a stable environment for the mushrooms to flourish. Like we ended up deciding to, to switch to cool rooms just because when I started my business was like just before the peak of summer, and I didn't realize how much mushrooms hated summer. Um, so... But just as I was starting to get my first orders and and first clients, I was still in a Bunnings tent, like under the carport, just as it's ticking up to 35, 40 degrees each day. So, like, I was losing more mushrooms than I was harvesting, put it that way. So I realised pretty quick that if I was going to make it work, like we had to put it into some cool rooms, um, which we did. Uh, with the help of people, I had to borrow money off people because I, I had no money, um, really. So, um, the, the cool rooms and like the ability to really control temperature, humidity, airflow is like, it's light and day. Like it's, it's still nowhere near as automated as what I want, but, um, in the space of a year to, 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 to look at it now, like it doesn't even seem real. Like when I look at it, I'm like, I just, it, yeah, like it's, it's pretty good just for like a home sort of operation. From the outset, Adam threw himself in the deep end, trying to run a business as he was learning about mushrooms. And as he soon discovered, mushrooms are very unpredictable. It seems like every couple of weeks, they find a new way to kick you in the nuts. Like you think you've got it under control or you think you, you figure out one thing and then something else that you've never heard of or you've never seen before happens. So it's just a constant, constant learning. And like a few of the more, far more experienced growers who've been doing it for five, six, seven, eight, nine years, who I've sort of started to make contact with, they don't make you feel any better. Like they, they tell me they still have the same stories. Like, you know, 10 years down the track, constantly getting kicked in the nuts by mushies. So, um, the, the main challenges, I guess, like, because I committed to making it a business like straight away, but I was making, it was a business before I even knew. But the business started, all right, but the, the, I was in a business course to learn about business before I'd actually harvested my first mushroom. So um, I remember sitting on this course and they were saying, all right, the most important thing about this is you really need to know your product and your offering inside out. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I've never, like, I've never grown a mushroom. What am I doing here? <laughs> Um, so yeah, the fact that like I committed to it and had customers expecting mushrooms straight away has just mean like there's just no t- time to really, um, guess carry out the normal experiments and the normal learnings that you would do before you start a business, like, you know, re- relaxed environment. Like I've always sort of been under the pump because I've committed to give people things. But I'm still learning it on the fly as well. Like um, that, that's just a constant challenge. Like I find that really stressful. Like that's probably the hardest thing is like knowing that even if you do the work and you've, you've tried your best and done everything that's worked every other week, like there's still 
quite often times where I have to ring people up and say, look, I haven't got what you wanted because something's happened that I, I didn't know about or I just I don't understand. So that's been really hard. Adam set about contacting other mushroom growers. He studied textbooks and took notes to monitor the results of his actions. And soon enough, it started to pay dividends. Ah, yeah, it was, it was, it's just crazy because I just, they're just so weird. Like I just look at them and I just, they're not, they don't look real like that. Just, I just remember thinking, this is bizarre. <laughs> I was proud, I was stoked, but I was just spent so much time looking at them and I took like a hundred photos of them because I was just thinking what are they like what what are they I don't understand how like, how they are what they are but yeah I was I was over the moon like I remember pretty much all my family and friends were force-fed mushrooms for the first week or so because I had like a few kilos because I like I made enough I don't know if I did like 10 10 logs or something which is probably five six seven eight kilos um and because I didn't want them to go to waste, like everyone was getting mushrooms, whether they liked it or not. Um, so yeah, I was stoked. Like, I was pretty proud. One one of the first little clusters, uh, it sort of aborted. Like so, as it came out, I, like, I was just watching it like a hawk every day because they grow so quickly. I was like, it was like my little baby. I was like so proud of it. And then it just turned yellow and just stopped growing. And I was like, oh, what's happening? Like, pretty upset. But I harvested it anyway, so I pulled it off. I put it on the windowsill, and I've actually still got it now, like a year or so later. Like it just it hardened and just kept its little form like perfectly. So it's like one of my little, I don't know, it's like my little good luck charm. I've got that, and I've got the first $15 that um, someone ever gave me to buy them. Like we basically forced the people at my girlfriend's work to buy my mushrooms, which was cool. <laughs> so I've still got that 10 and that fiver on the fridge. In the supermarket, we only really have access to a handful of mushroom varieties, but Adam explores a range that most of us have never seen, let alone tasted. I've got elm oysters, blue oysters, um, pink and yellow oysters as it warms up a bit, uh, king oysters, black pearl kings, lion's mane, coral tooth, piapino. Um, I think that's all. Um, I keep telling myself that because I'm so uh, space poor, like I don't have a lot, a lot of room, like the smart thing would be to choose your four or five best yielding, your most popular, your easily, easiest to get rid of, the ones that you know you can grow well. And I just keep getting sucked into growing all these like other awesome ones because there's so many cool ones or well, I make the mistake like I put a sample of something in a, a chef's mix and out of all the mushrooms, guaranteed that that sample that I don't want to grow, that because I don't have the room, they'll be like, "Oh, yeah, we'll have a couple of kilos of those next week, thanks. That'll be good." Um, so yeah, probably at the moment eight or nine varieties, but ideally, like until I get more space, I should I should really limit it to four or five. But I just got no discipline to stop growing the other ones because they're too cool. Adam began dropping off samples to chefs and word of mouth started to spread like wildfire. The first batch that came through, uh, I I divvied off like a couple little punnets to um, use as samples. So just to basically, not door knock, but like just lob at um, local local cafes or local restaurants, pretty much unannounced and just um, asked to talk to the chef and just introduce myself and drop them off. Um, Actual sales, they were like all, like sympathy sales, like, you know, the f- making your family buy them off you and you know, my missus taking them into her work, like, you know, they have to buy them. Like, I'm not going to say no. So, uh, that, that was the first actual ones. But, like, in terms of, yeah, like getting into kitchens, like the dropping off the samples was a was a um, definite Kickstarter. Um, I don't know that I really got that many sales out of it, but I definitely got, Got my name out there, um, but I got a few chefs talking as well. I think because um, they could see that the the quality was good. Like I perhaps ended up getting calls from other people who I hadn't met, who were mates with the people who didn't need the mushies, but like I'd given them samples. So you know, like the the door knocking or like the the sample drops paid off 
um, through word of mouth kind of thing. Soon enough, his peculiar mushrooms were getting the attention of the restaurant industry, including some of South Australia's best chefs. It actually does my head in the places that use my mushrooms. Like it's just one of the one of the things that's a bit surreal. Like, um, so we got Trent um, from Two KW. Um, he's been a really good supporter of mine. He's he uses them up there. Uh, there's uh, Jin Choi, um, executive chef out at Mount Lofty House, Hardy's Veranda, which is a pretty, pretty top-notch joint. Uh, I think it's got a couple of hats, three hats. I've got more hats than that at home, but they've got three hats. That's cool. Um, who else? Uh, oh, yeah, Kane. So Kane Pollard, he was, he's been a really, really good supporter of mine. Um, he's probably been a lot more... Um, patient and forgiving than what any other person would be in the world like, as I've been getting started but um, yeah having having him take me on when well, when the grand opening of Soul Rooftop like happened was when I met him so like we were on their first menu that was like one of my second or third customers so that that was insane like that was ridiculous like that really helped me because that's when I sort of realised the power of Instagram as well. Um, all the chefs post their stuff, all these restaurants post stuff. So being in there and, and, and people seeing him use my stuff, uh, that was like it was like a seal of approval. Like it took away anyone's doubt, I think. Um, so, yeah, being in there and Topery, um, his chef that he's got running Topery, Alex Payne, he's a legend. Uh, we, we talk all the time. Um, he's become a friend like he's actually been over to my house like where we grow the mushrooms um where i grew up like all the families there italian families they still make salamis and and do the pigs and make wine and stuff he's been there and met all my friends um gregory from hispanic mechanics been a massive supporter of mine he's a he's a legend um always looks after me and, and takes if i've ever got excess i know i can call him and he pretty much buys buys whatever i've got um, so that takes a lot of pressure off me as well. Um, I don't know. There's heaps of places, man. Like, it's like they're all they're all awesome places. Like there's Dwayne from uh, Acacia at Henley Clutch. Like he's he's taught me so much about mushrooms. Like I'll drop him off mushrooms and he'll make ice cream out of them. He'll make bloody tamari. He'll ferment stuff. He'll he's like a little mad scientist. Like it's crazy. Like he just. He, he teaches me heaps of things. He's been a massive supporter, puts us on his menus. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of really good people that, that have helped me a lot. It's been cool. The interest and support for Adam's mushrooms have been life-changing, but it's also given him a window into a whole new food world. We always make a point of trying to, to go and eat out at the, um, the places that support me. So, like... There wouldn't be many places that buy my mushrooms that we haven't gone and, and purchased dinner and, and you know, shown the love back. Um, a, because, it, I don't know, that's just what makes the world go around. Like, you know, they look after me. I like to look after them. But as well, we get a kick, like we get a kick out of seeing my mushrooms on the plate. Um, pretty embarrassing, really. Like, they turn me into, like, a real little um, Instagram uh, what's the word? I was going to say like a naughty word, but like a one of these people that pretty much stands on their table and is like looking down, taking photos of their food. Like I'll do that. Uh, like if we see like um, our name on the menu or up on the specials board or something like that, there's there's definitely many photos taken, and it's it is a source of pride, and it it, yeah, it reinforces, I guess, that we're doing good work and that we should keep going. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. This career change still surprises Adam. He never imagined becoming a farmer, and even with the dedication and success, he's still bewildered by the path he's taken. It's just weird. Like I just, I don't even understand how it happened for, for a start. Like it's just bizarre to me. Like, um, and it's just amplified. Like when, like, day, like days like today, like talking to you, I'm like. I feel like a, like a little personal trainer that's just done a three-day course that's like talking to some doctor who's like a level four AFL strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> that's like, I get those vibes like 
every day, like walking into these kitchens and talking to these these chefs that are um, obviously super committed and passionate for a very long time in, in their field. And I'm just like a little, a little bit of a Johnny come lately. Um, so, yeah, it's surreal. Like it doesn't feel real, but at the same time, I love it. Like I love it. Um, I love what I learn off these people. I love seeing their passion because um, it's not something that I've really had in my jobs in the past. So I sort of feed off them a little bit um, and, and I look up to them as well. Like I sort of, they give me ideas on how I can do things better and maybe different offerings or different ways I can offer things um, to the community and, and to the, the hospitality community, but just the community in general. Um, so, yeah, like I, I feed off that. But when I when I look at myself, in the mirror and say you're a mushroom farmer, which I do do sometimes. I look at myself and I'm just like, how the fuck are you a mushroom farmer? It just makes no sense. <laughs> it's just weird. Mushroom growing is complex, but Adam believes if you understand the parameters and understand their needs, it gives you the best chance of letting them show their true character. It's complex, but it's not that complex. Like it, like it, you just need to follow a certain set of rules and keep the environment in like in between a parameter that these mushrooms like um but it just doesn't always go according to plan so like you need to you need to i don't know i actually don't know you you really need to just constantly be on your toes and not take anything for granted um but then when, when the good ones do come along like you need to really treat them um with care like after the harvest so like one of the things i pride myself on um which i don't know if it separates me from anyone or or whatever but one of the rules that i set for myself like it's very rare that a chef will get a mushroom like in his kitchen that's been in a fridge like from the day before um i'm really big on harvesting and and getting it straight into into the chef um same day, but usually like within an hour, within two hours max. Um, you know, that's going to be a challenge to, to keep that going as I get bigger and better and, and over time. Like that's something I really don't want to slip um, because there are a lot of people out there that can grow good mushrooms. Um, and there's definitely people out there that do grow really, really good mushrooms. Like people who are a lot smarter and a lot more experienced than me, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, like the, the, the service and the, the the time we try like between harvest and getting it to the kitchen like that's that's probably what I pride myself on the most. This whole endeavour has reinforced his belief in his hometown and his home state, especially when it comes to produce and wine. I've always been a really um, really staunch like SA great sort of Adelaide's the best kind of thing, um, but since I've been involved in the mushrooms, like they've, they've really solidified that for me even more. Like, um, just by, you know, as part of the business, you know, you do market research, you, you suss out the chefs that are out there, the cafes, the restaurants, and you've got to sort of know the, the battleground. So like, um, really paying attention to all that and learning more about that. Just, it's just amazing how many good places there are here. Um, like amazing chefs, talented chefs, produce, um, locations, the wine. Like, So I think it's made me love where I live even more and made me really appreciate the talent that, that we have here. Um, and I've lived, lived overseas. I lived in Jakarta. We used to go to Singapore for dinner all the time. We'd go to, to Korea, Thailand, like flights there were like nothing. Like, so, you know, I've sort of travelled around and seen things and, I don't know. I'd challenge anyone to tell me like Australia hasn't got it better than everyone else in the world. Like we've got some seriously good shit here. And unlucky for all you guys, Adelaide's got the best of it. It's been a wild ride, but Adam's just getting started. Stringing four good weeks together instead of three good weeks together. Like, <laughs> like there's just always these things that go wrong. So um, definitely fine tuning and, and making things making things um, more consistent. Like, um, that's something I'd love to improve. Like, there's still times now where things go wrong where I have to, like, call chefs, like, and, and 
say, look, not this week, it's going to be next week, and I hate doing that. Um, to the point where I, I don't, when I meet new people, like I really try and get people to not even put it as a menu item. Like I try and steer people towards mix, mix boxes and just running specials just because I don't want to ever let people down um, until I've got it like super duper ironed out. Um, so yeah, one day that would be cool. It sounds like that just never happens. If I'm talking to the old heads in the mushy game, like it's just always a thing. Um, so yeah, I think that the, the next best thing that will help me is probably getting my own space, giving my poor old daddy his garage back, um, getting a getting a space, having more room, just to not feel so crowded and not feel like the space is always sort of teetering on the edge. Like it's always sort of sort of at capacity and. It just it just makes it a little bit stressful sometimes. So I'd, I'd love to have a bit more space and, um, yeah, branch out a bit. Perhaps get a helper as well. Like it's pretty full on to do everything yourself. Like I've just started letting my girlfriend do a little bit more admin-y sort of stuff and mum and dad helping a little bit because it's it's too much for one person to do it all. Um, so yeah, maybe I need a minion. After 20 years in the workforce doing jobs where his heart was never really in it, mushrooms have changed Adam's outlook. I'm pretty proud of not giving up um, because like, that was some pretty pretty stressful times, man. Like, I'm not too big to admit. Like I've cried like lots of times, man, since like this last year. Like because you just put so much effort into it and. Um, like you're teaching yourself and you're like trying to find people to learn off and stuff like that and like when it goes wrong or like when like I really you know I really really like my customers like, I love my customers so like um, you know when you have to, to to let them know that oh like you can't do what you said you were going to do this week because something's gone wrong like that like that ripped my guts out lots of times um, especially when you don't really know how to fix it like in the, those middle few months like i'm just like i don't know what to do like i don't know i have no, no idea like you just have to keep plugging and plugging and plugging so like there's been times in the past where i've just gone nope too hard like in other jobs or something or like i don't like it so i'm not going to do it um whereas like with this i can just i can just see that like it, to stick it out and to get through it like it's just going to pay off like and and i just love there's nothing better than the day like when I go on delivery and like I, I take these boxes of mushies into these kitchens to the chefs and like the chefs and like the little sous chefs and the other little sidekicks, I don't know all their names, but like they scurry towards the box. It's like a little kids at Christmas, like they scurry to the box and it's like the papa chef gets the knife and like slices the, <laughs> slices the sticky tape and opens it up and it's like like a cartoon where like the lights like come out of the box and like they all go ooh <laughs> it's like that's my favourite thing so like um, yeah, I get a real kick out of that so I'm proud of sticking with it uh, knuckling down and, and offering I don't know just taking pride in offering something that people love and not not being scared to get in the uncomfortable zone Adam Bray is not your everyday farmer, but his willingness to roll the dice and put his hands in the soil have resulted in not only the most incredible produce, but he's forged new connections and turned his life around too. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.